Hello and welcome once more to another installment of the Stocktober Special. I'm your ever-ready host, Lothran, and there's so very much work yet to be done. So let's dig right into it, grab a quick snack, settle in, and get comfy. You're listening to Find Me the Right Jar. Running, jumping over obstacles, keeping the package secure. Gotta go fast, gotta be safe. Can't screw this up. This is my last shot. Swing around this corner. Leap over that pole. There! Master Kai! The boy slowed down, taking the jars he'd recovered from the watchtower's fortifications out of his satchel. An explosion shattered the top of the nearby building, ripping the mindset of everyone doing anything for several hundred meters. Well, Master Kai still bent over his delicate work. The jars, boy! He called without sounding pleasant or angry. Seth recalled the right sequence as people began rushing toward the destruction to see what they could do to help. He read the labels in his head knowing Master Kai would get annoyed if he did it aloud. He set the mixtures close to his master's hands, just where the old man would naturally seek them out. Hmm, not this one. Good job though, right label? Too old? Master Kai bent back to his surgery, handing Seth the first compliment he'd ever offered. This one will do. Master Kai replied at the boy's second choice. Seth beamed even as he fell to his work. Three years. Three years and six other apprentices fall into the hardships of surgery labor. Seth had held on past ever hoping to hold a moment like this in his hands. He retrieved the correct jar. Master Kai demanded perfection, even in such a mess as the small angled flap of cloth he'd set up to keep dust and debris at a minimum. A special lantern casting light down on Master Kai's delicate and precise work. Needle! Boy! Fetch me a needle! Master Kai yelled. Seth handed it over, pushing his joy to the side. A guttural piercing scream erupted over the scene. Seth shivered against his sudden dread being reminded of how much danger they were in and so close to the fighting that they were. Master Kai, shouldn't we help? Seth asked as several more monstrous cries of glee joined the first scream in a chorus of bloodshed and devastation. We are helping, boy, Master Kai replied as he finished sewing up the wounds. Bandages, he yelled at Seth. And Seth continued to assist while feeling deliberate vibrations of rampaging feet coming ever closer to their location. I meant, I meant, shouldn't we help with the fight? Seth asked as he automatically began helping his teacher break down the operating tent. We don't fight, we help. Pick one. Keep this nonsense from your mind. We're surgeons. Help me carry this man. Master Kai put the tent on his back, lifting the man by his shoulders while Seth held him by his legs. The pair carried him in silence, avoiding any signs of battle whenever they could. Arriving at the inner gate, the stationed guards took the man from them, and Seth gave them instruction for managing his care until one of the regular doctors could see to him. Master Kai refreshed on his water bottle and supplies, taking a quick meal, and speaking to and addressing no one, no matter how much they tried to gain his attention, until the captain of the guard gave him orders on the worst injuries to any of the officers out in the field as of yet. Kai told the man which he would deal with, and then gathered his things, leaving in silence. Boy, snap to it! Master Kai began to jog out to the west gate. Seth followed behind. It would be now or never. Master Kai was always too busy or too focused to speak to for any length. Uh, Master Kai, uh, I have an, um, an, uh, an idea. I developed it to be good enough to tell you. Not, not like my other ideas. Not like that at all. Seth kept going, knowing whether he answered or not. Master Kai was always listening, always observing. It's about carrying the injured in the tent. I, I have a solution that, that could really help us out. Master Kai halted his speech with a shielding hand as he pulled the boy up against a dark alcove in a building. Massive, earth-shaking bodies rushed past them. Insects as large as wagons, hefting massive, cudgel-like, diamond-hard pairs of arms jutting from their heads. Garab. Seth held his breath until they passed by on their quest to destroy the city and carry off all the inhabitants for their feastings. Seth began once more as they started jogging through the back alleys again. 
We can use the tent as the basic structure. Four poles, well, two a man's width apart, with cloth like my aunt's colorful shutters. She's very proud of them, and they hold up in a storm and are simple to repair. We simply need... We need simple. We need... You, you require simple. You said that yourself. He kept on plowing through his thoughts since Master Kai had yet to stop him as they jogged to their destination. The other poles will roll out like the, the awning to a shopkeeper's, uh, what's it called? I, um, I'm at a loss for it. It's actually called an awning boy, Master Kai replied as he peeked out across one of the last few streets. Bow, give me the bow. Seth, give me the bow. Hand it to me quick. Come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. Seth complied, being shaken from his oh-so-important inventions to hand over the weapon. I thought, um, we don't fight, Master Kai, Seth replied. We fight when we have to. How do I describe the calling of the surgeon, Seth? Repeat it, now. Fight to save. Surgeon, jackal, soldier, man. Never falter, never waver. Always with distinction and never a moment with dishonor, sir. Just like that. Master Kai knocked an arrow, stepping out into the street. And he repeated what he'd said. Just like that. Seth followed after, keeping an eye on all the angles Master Kai couldn't watch. But his eyes snapped to attention the millisecond the string of the bow twanged with its majestic release. The arrow soared through the air, arcing right to its target, hitting the massive monstrosity right in the tiny space of one of the hand-sized eyes. It gurgled in obvious fright, thrashing for a full minute as bright green gunk gushed from its face, splattering all the nearby buildings with its vital essence. Master Kai turned towards his pupil. Let that be a lesson, Seth. One shot, one kill. Master Kai let a slight smile creep onto his face while nodding to himself. Now tell me more about this invention of yours. Well, um, the, the awning, sir, we could have other poles that fold down. If we tie or sew on straps or string to those poles, it can be secured and loosened in a moment, and then we'll have an actual portable tent. You always complain about how low the current one is, so I, I thought we could just raise it higher. Uh, this way we can work, carry our work environment with us, and we use it to help carry the injured to safety that much faster and better, away from the danger. Sir, you know, like, if, if, if you approve. I like the idea. Draw up some plans. Take whatever funds you'll need. Get a prototype working as soon as possible after the battle. Hand me the jar of kethlamine. Our patient is in this house. Seth almost dropped it, catching the glass just before it struck the ground to shatter. He breathed a sigh of relief, handing the vital substance over to the sternly staring Master Kai. There's work to be done, his mentor said. And so it is. We've come yet again to the end of our time together. So sweet and precious it has been to me. But all things come and go. I hope you've enjoyed our time together, I know I have. Each time I relay a little more from the heart of the jackals unto each of you, it fills me with such a wondrous, clear, flowing spring of glee. Unfortunately, Brumble could not join us to perform the extra in person, but I have recorded it, and here it is for your listening pleasure and mine. Uh, hello and good night to each and all. Uh, Leave your comments and questions down below. Like and share to help us grow. And feed a hungry brumble. That's me. And don't forget, we encourage each and every one of you to stay safe out there. Goodbye.